Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Antimatter Chemistry. In today's episode, we're going to start off by copying this cube with the copy paste gadget and pasting it somewhere here in the back so we can set up our machines to process all of the ores that we're going to get from our quarry. I think this feels like a good spot for us to place this and I got a golden bag of holding full of white antimatter because I know that links up with the building gadgets from Direwolf. So right click. Yep, we have a cube. It's done. Super easy. <laughs> okay, cool. So if we head on inside here, we should even have the framework for the inside. Yeah, we kind of do. Uh, we basically can just remove this black antimatter and then this white antimatter over here. This was from uh, those other two. And apparently these corners are, yeah, that, that's where we had the design in the floor. All right, cool. So we this is gonna be where we're gonna connect it anyway. So what we can do is we can just fill in the floor, set a te teleporty point, and then we can actually start working on the quarry. The first thing that we need is a network receiver. So I'm just gonna shift right click it with the card, go back to the base and down here, I already set up the transmitter so we can just link it up and then we can go grab a wireless transmitter and also some cable and some upgrades of this variety. Can I make a stack of these? We don't have enough quartz. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do four then, okay. So then we can head on back to quarry here. And in here, we're going to hook this up. So just some cables that I'll actually bring just all the way up to the top. And we can move the receiver if need be. But basically, it's going to be hooked up here with the this guy and then range upgrades like so. So we now have wireless access so we can start working on setting up the machines. And for that, I set up a recipe for some pulverizers that we can make. So if I want to make like 20, we have the ability to do so. Cool. And then I don't think I have the, the kits here. I have three resident conversion kits. So I think the first step in setting this up is gonna be setting up the redstone processing and the gold to get the cinnabar, which I have right here. Uh, so we can start processing the uh, nickel ore, so we can start getting platinum, so we can get more uh, enderium and we can get more resonant conversion kits. I think the best solution is to keep the ores that we get from the quarry out of the refined storage system and we're just going to store them in some drawers. We're going to set up the quarry somewhere here in the middle or maybe in the bottom somehow and then we can hook an ender chest or maybe just, yeah, probably an ender chest or maybe just a chest directly to it. And then we can keep uh, Xnet cables on the back of these drawers. And we can just hook everything up with an Xnet uh, storage network. So we can transfer all of the ores to the corresponding drawers. And we're going to start off with gold redstone and also the stabilized redstone, which in the last episode, I said it's really useless. It is not. We can use it in the a pulverizer to get the stabilized clathrate with a 50% chance of getting cinnabar. So just half of this is going to turn into cinnabar, which is cool. And I set up five pulverizers here. Three are going to be for redstone and then two are going to be for the gold and the uh, stabilized redstone ore. If that's not going to be enough, we have two more extra that we can set up. And here on the bottom, we're just going to extract everything that we get. Uh, all of the byproducts, the gold, for example, would need to be smelted into gold ingots, but we have 1.2 million gold ingots, and I don't really need to process them to keep them. So uh, we're just not going to do that. We're just going to put a trash can on the back and just void the pulverized gold because it's not needed. So basically, on top here, we're going to have some item ducts like so, like so, and like so. And we can have just some servos on top. Uh, this guy is going to be set to nearest first. It doesn't matter. We're just going to do that and then that and then also this. So it should go into all of these. Yep. We just need a wireless crystal here. So we need one of these. And then we also need an IO crystal. Draconic. Do we have any? We can just do that. Get this one and then we grab ourselves a cell over here on the bottom and we're going to put 
this one in the middle and that is easiest to figure out with just some of these. Let's do that and that and that way we can just go seven, seven. So this is the middle. Cool. I'm gonna put this guy down, power cell, that, and then we crystal bindery collect thingy mob do hacker them together. Bloom bloop. Okay, they're done. And now we can do that and give you all power. Cool. So you should all start processing. Uh, I need to give you augments, especially these augments. Um, that's probably not enough, but or maybe it is. Did I did I math it perfectly? I didn't. I mathed it. I, I over mathed it. Okay. Cool. So we're processing that. Uh, the redstone we can import directly into the system. It is not an issue there. And also the destabilized clath rate is only used to make redstone directly with cryodium dust, or we can melt it directly into destabilized redstone, uh, which, nah, we don't really need it. So trash can times two. And I set up, yeah, the output here. So you void that, you void that. So that should do its thing once, yeah, a bit of it is processed and all of the cinnabar is going down here. So we are collecting that. These guys are probably full of redstone, which we're gonna set up some importers. Bam, bam, bam. And then we can grab a bunch of cable. Let me make another couple of stacks of this. Cool, and we can just hook it up from wherever we have that thing. Um, right. Are we gonna go up top or on the bottom? Probably down the bottom because we need an external storage here as well. Um, so let's grab one of these. And we're just gonna slap you right down here. And then we can do this. Hold on. We're gonna go down all the way to the floor. And I could potentially move this guy one block over uh, to hook this up. So let's let's do this and we can move it later. But come down here and hook this up cool are we gonna need some upgrades on this probably well maybe not I'll leave it be and see if it uh, if it backs up but um, that should get us some cinnabar and we can tackle processing of this guy next so we can do that on the separate wall actually hmm yeah, I have an idea. So we have 13 ores that need processing here. Uh, and we can do seven and seven on each side. And then we can do possibly iron on this side, because that's going to be the actually, we can do six and six, basically, and then iron on this side with the nickel, because iron is going to be the one that is coming in the in the biggest quantity that we need to process with multiple pulverizers, probably. I believe we now have a proper setup for ore processing. It is halfway done, but it is getting there. So what I'm actually going to do is we're going to just take the ore directly from the drawer by the pulverizers auto input feature. And then we're going to process it with the tectonic petrothium, which we are providing here in the back with some exporters like so. And then it's going to output both of the outputs into here because the redstone furnace is not fast enough to process both of the outputs at the same time. So basically we can just keep the drawer as a storage for the other bit that doesn't get processed. And once we process all of the ore, it's going to process that as well. And we're, for example, for, for example, for example, for iron, uh, it might produce a bunch of nickel. I don't think it's going to produce more than a thousand uh, from this. Uh, which I don't think will be an issue, but if it does, we can easily add like one storage upgrade into each one of these drawers just as a contingency so we don't really waste anything. Uh, and yeah, uh, so for example, if we just turn this guy's auto input to be enabled and input it on top, and then we set the output to be on the bottom for both of these, we can then just come around the back here and we can give this guy fluid tectonic petrothium, like so. This guy should start processing everything. And what we're just gonna do is we're just gonna grab the tin, toss it in here, and then this guy needs to be input, output on the bottom, auto input enabled, and it's gonna do the tin. Uh, and here we get a byproduct of pulverized iron, which is gonna go right in there. And basically the 
byproduct that is smelted in the furnace can't go anywhere, right? So we just simply have a controller slave, and then we have an output on the furnace on the back as well to output the other byproduct as well. So uh, that's how we... So for example, this has iron. We just need an output on the back, and that clears it up, puts it in here, because we have all of the drawers connected on a line with controller slaves, which these actually... Yeah, we don't need these on the bottom here. We just need trim. Uh, I use, I thought I, I, I... Yeah, I had those for the inputs. Yeah, we don't need them anymore. Uh, right. Because I wanted... I basically wanted uh, to have a line of ducts going into one controller slave, but we can even get away without using any of that. And I think that will be less laggy. So um, these can also have controller slaves on the side, but we won't be able to hide those. So we're just going to use some... Uh, item ducts over here, but yeah, that's basically the idea for everything around here. The nickel, I was firstly trying to set up with pulverizers, but then I realized I need an induction smelter with cinnabar, and that has processed everything into the, uh, into platinum and into nickel ingots, and if we look here, we now have a thousand enderium. So all of these machines have been made into the resonant tier, they have all the proper augmentations, so I will be, uh, also, moving things around. We need a servo here so we can start processing our redstone again so we can get more cinnabar. Uh, and this room isn't going to be controlled on any detectors or anything. Well, actually, the machines are not going to be controlled by detectors. The quarry will be, which we can set up kind of possibly down here somewhere. We can put a line of detectors onto a wireless transmitter and we can turn the quarry on and off depending on how many items we have in the system of a certain thing. So, for example, we can set it to a million iron, and we can store a million iron and run the quarry until then, and then we can set it to a million copper if we wanted to, but I don't think we really need to. I have the room pretty much finished and also decorated. The only thing that I'm missing is the ores up top, kind of like I have for redstone here. I want to say redstone and then the dirt roar and it gets processed, and we need to uncover all of these covers and replace them with the thicken the glass covers because I want this to be visible and I never used glass covers. I didn't really think of it and I saw it in Gaming on Caffeine's video how he used this uh, and it's just looking uh, really cool and better. And also this pulverizer here, it is producing just the cinnabar so it's not going to produce any gold but I decided to add the gold um, gold thingy-mabob drawer here as well because we need to have it somewhere not that it's not downstairs in the main cube and here is the perfect spot. So it's kind of like gold gets turned into uh, cinnabar and gold, which it really isn't. But anyway, doesn't matter. So we need to uncover all of these as well and just add something like that. And I think I'm going to go around in the back and add just the white covers so we don't see the cabling in the back and that will look really cool, I think. I could even add the ore cover on the background and maybe the block cover there so it's kind of like a nice uniform color. That could also be a neato thing. Anyway, you might be wondering why this uh, green squircle, square squircle, is in the floor. It is basically that. <laughs> uh, a mirror on top of the quarry, which is currently hooked up to power via our wireless crystal down there. So the ores are going to get filled in this ender chest and we are then going to empty it out over here into this drawer controller and it is eventually or it would eventually get filled up with all of the random ores that we are not processing and i have decided to add those down somewhere here here they are and what we can do is we can just put a another controller slave or drawer controller i think a slave will work just fine and we're going to copy that ender chest, which we have up top, which I believe we can put if we do this and this, and then we do a servo right here. We say enabled, and then we are going to grab some dyes. I think I need some cactus green, and we also need some lime dye. And not just one cactus green, two cactus green, and then also a diamond. So we can add a diamond right here. And then we add cactus green, cactus green, and I put lime in the middle. There we go. Cool. So that should be linked up to the top. And we should be able to turn on the quarry just to see this working. Let's set it to redstone. 
actually, let's set it to redstone on and we can just do a lever uh, just for the time being. We're going to toss you right there. So you should start running. You are getting all of the power. That's neato. Cool. So how much are you draining? 120,000 RF per tick. Okay, cool. So um, yeah, all right, that's fine. Are you draining the cell super quick? You are. So we're not providing enough power in the cell here. Okay, mm, right. So the cells are inferior to the draconic um, power transfer. So what we might do is just put a cell up top and limit it on how much it can extract. I mean, we could probably limit it here. Can we? No. Um, yeah, I might have to tweak the power a little bit and we can see if everything is heading on out of here. Oh yeah, dirt and grass. We need to sort that out next. I believe we can just hook up another ender chest over to this drawer controller. It's currently, I believe, has that there. So we can just do a servo and a duct right here. Boom, boom. So that should, I think, empty out the dirt and the grass. And it should be faster than the quarry can produce it. Yeah, that's fine. We can add a cover and another white antimatter on top. And that is that sorted. So let's go back to the quarry room and I want to see this stuff in action. I still need to sort out the power. Oop, not what I wanted. See, give you power. Boom, there you go. Uh, so this is draining super quickly. I assume we can just put more power cells down so we get a higher output. But this looks like it's doing its thing. Uh, we are getting the ores every so often. And I might have to look, sit in one of these pulverizers, or actually, I might just set all of these pulverizers to auto input disabled, just so we accumulate at least a couple of the ores, uh, so we can, oh, hello, iron. Thank you, okay, you're done. So what did I forget here, auto input? Oh yeah, uh, I don't have these hooked up. Right, uh, so let's grab one iron, boom, there we go. Okay, so, and also this nickel, do that and that. And I think these furnaces do not have auto input enabled. Yep. That is doing its thing. Uh, you need to be hooked into power. Hold on. Boom. Yeah, okay. Power is gotten in all of these. Cool. And I think what I can do actually in these servos, I can do just random. Just so every time, and I can actually, you know what, even better. I can do decrease stack size extracted by to one. Just so it extracts one at a time for all of these. Or when it needs to be processed. Cool. Awesome. Okay, that is looking good. Uh, right, so ores. I'm still going to turn off all of these auto inputs. Get one of the ores on all of these. And we can then uh, decorate them up top as well. Since we were struggling for power, I decided to just put a Draconic Energy I.O. crystal and we can actually, you know what, we don't need to put it right here. We're going to put it right here and then we're going to do that and we need to set this guy to be output. And then we need to go back to the Rubik's Cube and then hook it up to this guy. Boom, there we go. Uh, we are going to tolerate one line and it's going to be a very bright line because it's draining a whole bunch of power. Uh, but we're going to tolerate it. It's going to be fine. We can go to the quarry now and we can fill this in. And we should see this guy be filling back up again. No. Why are you not? You shouldn't be draining that much. Why are you no fill up? Why are you draining si 15,000? Just a couple of machines. I mean, yes. Anyway, that's weird. All right, before I got distracted, we are now providing this quarry with infinite amounts of power. I really don't know why the other thing isn't transferring power properly. So if we go here, why are you draining? Why are you not? Why are you no hooked up? Input? Input? 
I mean, I assume that this is, yeah, this is draining 150,000 RF per tick. This should be filling up. Yet it is not. It's like this is draining all of the power, which is strange. I mean, we can probably get away with, can I do more, multiple links on this? Probably. So hold on, let's remove that guy. We're gonna fix this up, if it is gonna let me. There we go. And what we can we do just this and hook that directly to the quarry? I assume we can have multiple connections. Yeah. Okay, so that is doing the whole power thing. Cool. We can then cover this up mostly. And if we go look at the power cell downstairs, are you now filling up? Still no. Well, the quarry is gonna drain all of my base power then. Whoops, okay. Um, right, so let me do a bit of tinkering with this Draconic Evolution bits and hopefully we can figure it out in a way where we can have the quarry run full at full power and we can also have power at our base. All right, it fixed itself. I didn't do anything. This is filled up again. Uh, and now we're draining 120-ish thousand for the quarry and then 2,000 something for everything else in the base. It is now actually the next day and I have left this running overnight and we have accumulated a whole bunch of resources. You can see the numbers right here going through all of these. We are getting everything in mass, mass quantities, which is wonderful. For example, platinum is really cool for enderium, a lot of iron and all of that good stuff. And I did add a few elevators here because it's that, a super easy way to get to the background here, basically. Uh, so we can just go back up and down and also we can go down here uh, and go uh, check on the basement as well. So over here where you see this ender chest, this is where we have the drawers for uh, storing all of the different ores that we're getting uh, that we're currently not processing. And over here on top, I kind of added another ender chest that is extracting basically all of the ores, uh, or at least I added a few drawers, I should say, to this uh, top system of drawers which basically stores all of the random junk that we uh, get from the quarry as well, because it seems like a simpler way to filter things rather than setting it up here in the filter, uh, because we would have to nest filter and filter and filter, and this way it just works uh, much, much better and much more simpler. So I just check this chest every so often, and we can then toss the items in here. So we're getting skeleton skulls, bones, we're getting this oil shale thing, which turns into bitumen which is used as a furnace fuel or it can be turned into crude oil which can then be turned into naphtha which can be turned into refined fuel which you can be used for power so it's not really useful that much for right now but over here we're also getting some leaves we're getting seeds and all of this junk over here these berries are actually well they would be actually useful if we ever needed uh ultimate stew uh, I don't think it's used for anything other than putting in a color in a generator, uh, but this is uh, made with all of this, and it is normally in Averidia in some recipes required to make uh, the Infinity Catalyst, I believe, but this uh, this time around we just need the singularities from all of the um, all of the chemicals. So this room is fully complete and working, and the quarry is running beautifully. And I totally forgot to show you that I set up a cursed farm again because I was running low on the liquid meat that we're using in our meat feeder to basically never run out of food. So uh, down here we have uh, this guy, which is the mob slaughter factor, which is killing all of the mobs and is then exporting meat into here. It is just voiding the pink slime because we don't really need it. We could even just do this. I think we have the tank for slime here. Yeah, but you know, we're... Are we gonna need it? Probably not. Let's set it here. It's probably never gonna fill up. Um, yeah, that's fine. We it, it can stay there. That's all good. Anyway, uh, the way we have this configured is we can just uh, turn it on and off manually right now. I could bring uh, a cable or basically just a, I could set up a detector uh, over in the base for liquid meat and then control this guy over here with a redstone transmitter receiver combo thing that we've been using for all of the spawners, which are currently off because we have 393,000 uh, white antimatter. And I think if we extract a few of these, yeah, we can see all the spawners turn on. <laughs> uh, 
and we should uh, very closely, yeah, we just fill up over that and then all of the spawners sh shut off. That's so cool to see. But uh, we might even turn off this uh, master switch for the white antimatter because it doesn't need to turn on all of our spawners at the, at the same time. Because we did finish processing all of these, um, uh, these chemicals in the dissolvers room. So we have a bunch of each of these, which is really, really cool. So we can turn those into the infinity catalyst at some point. I also want to show you that I cleaned up our temporary machines room. We now have uh, the two compactors, the induction smelter, the pulverizer, and the redstone furnace all here. And I set up importers on the bottom so we can just toss whatever we need to process into here and it gets done and then imported into the system directly. So if I need, for example, some gears that we use for some things, I can just toss a couple of stacks of ingots in there, gets processed, tossed in the system, and I never have to come back again to pick up the gears. And over here, I did set up our enchantment extractor, applicator, the arcane insorcellator, and also the enchantment factory, and just a random anvil over here. And the rest is pretty much empty. So what we can actually do is we can grab some of this, say a couple of stacks of that, and we can just cover it up just so we don't have to look at the inside. So we can do something like this, and then maybe put the white antimatter like that. We can do that on both sides. And here in the back, we'll just put a white antimatter like so so it hides the back side of the anvil there we go and there we go so that's basically the room a little bit cleaner uh this room is eventually gonna be removed probably i'll just fill it in because we're not gonna need the compactors anymore because i want to still automate the gears that we need and possibly the plates i don't really know if we you know what we can actually probably do instead of having uh plates and gears on demand uh, like all all the time in the system, we can possibly set it up so it uh, with a crafter because we're not going to need that many. For example, when we need the conversion kits, uh, we do require, for example, if I look in here, we do require an Electrum gear and a Lumium gear and also a Silver gear. So maybe for some of the gears that are used in most recipes, I can set it up so it's always on demand uh, set up in the system. And for some other ones, we can probably get away with just having a crafter and the recipe inside. So we don't need to worry about having things on demand as well. But all of that is going to have to wait until next episode. So I want to thank you all so much for watching. I'm really hoping you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, make sure to hit the like button. And you can also subscribe to get notified of when new videos go live. And you can support me on Patreon as well if you want to play with me here on this server or a vanilla server. And I will see you all in the next episode. Have a good one. Bye-bye.